Well, good afternoon, international basketball fans, and welcome to the 2023 FIBA Basketball Cup. It's time for classification games, but before we get there, enjoy the local entertainment brought to you by the Thriller in Manila. Well, when you win, you win for all. And that's what it's all about here at the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to this classification game between Angola and China. I am your commentator, Josh Ben, alongside head coach of the Austin Spurs, Will Void. Coach, this game is more than just classification. This is all about the 2024 Paris Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams still alive right now for that ticket. It's going to be important that they log a win here, especially for China, who has yet to find a win in this tournament. Well, interesting you say that because the only Asian team right now that's in good position to qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics today is Japan. If Japan de defeats Venezuela and all other results go in their way, we could see them book their ticket to Paris. Yeah, so China, you know, understands what's at hand today. Definitely trying to figure out a way to find some offensive chemistry so they can come up with this win. Well, China back in 2019 losing to Venezuela. That would have seen them go to the next round before qualifying for the quarterfinals. And they'll be hoping the Venezuelans will do them a big favor against Japan. That's live in Okinawa later to this evening. But now we're going to get set to introduce some of the key players for China. Now, a bit of a spirited performance last night, but it's been the same old story for China. Lacking creativity and also at times lacking belief and confidence. Yeah, you know, they've really struggled to find a group that's given them some consistency. You know, Lee Kayar especially struggling with his shooting, just 25% from three, 50% from the free throw line. They went to him at the four a little bit later in that game. Maybe we'll see some of that again today. Well, this team coached by the great Sasha Georgievich, as we mentioned, the former coach of Serbia and a former great player himself when he played for the former Yugoslavia. And now we're going to get set to introduce your old team. Now, you've been actually impressed with how they played so far. They almost defeated the Dominican Republic. You could have seen them go to the the, the crossover with the Italians, with the, uh, with the Dominican Republic as well. This team is actually a very, very strong team. Well, you know, defensively, they play so hard, it's going to keep them in almost any game. So able to create a lot of extra possessions through steals and offensive rebounds. 18.7 offensive rebounds. That leads the entire World Cup so far. For them, the question is, can they make enough perimeter shots to have a chance to win? Just 2 for 21 from 3 against the Dominican Republic and shooting only 18% in the World Cup so far. That's last place of all the teams. Well, Lucchetti Gonzalez has been one of the key players. When they played against the Philippines, shooting a much better percentage from the perimeter, as you mentioned, but this man as well, tough as nails, rolling his ankle, but still coming back in the game to play against a very, very tough Dominican Republic team. This team has to be led by Bruno Fernando. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it will be interesting to see how that ankle is treating him in this game, but he's such an important part to that team. He's able to give them something that scoring that they're gonna need. 
Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we are momentarily away from standing for the national anthems of both Angola and Puerto Rico. But we're going to show you some of the other key matches that will be taking place today, of course. Well, this is the classification round here at the Aranetsa Coliseum. That's a big game. South Sudan, another team vying for that Olympic spot to be the best African team. And they'll meet Angola, but it's going to be a tough game for them in front of a very passionate Filipino crowd. Yeah, no question. You can see it there in the standings. I think, you know, both Angola and South Sudan see these games as must wins. They will match up head to head in the next game. So probably the winner of that matchup could represent Africa at the Olympics. Well, let's stand now for the national anthems of Angola and China. Well, the national anthems of these two beautiful countries have been sung, and now Chinese players along with Angolan players will shake hands with each other. But, Coach, it's time to introduce three very important people for this big game, our three referees. And again, we're very proud that we have some of the finest officials coming from France, Johan Rosso, Latvia, Martins, Kozlovskis, and for Croatia, Hrvatska, we have Martin Vulic. Well, the stakes don't get any bigger than this. Olympic basketball currently on the line here for the classification. And this is the beauty of the FIFA World Cup. You got teams vying to get to the quarterfinals, but also teams with a chance to be the best team of their continent to try and get to Paris. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, to be honest, some of these teams come in here understanding that it's such a long shot at winning the World Cup that really the focus is that, making sure that they are the representative for their region for the Olympics. Well, again, the Chinese players. Oh, I know you're very high on this man because you know I can see why exactly you know he's got a bit of creativity in his game a little bit of nastiness but he needs consistency more three-point shooting but he's got to find a way to get these players to play a little bit tougher well you know Jao Ri has been tremendous for them so far in this tournament shooting 50 percent from three to go along with that playmaking that he has they need to find consistent scoring from somewhere Joe Chi, I think, is that other guy that really needs to step up. When he's gotten the ball, he's delivered, shooting an incredible 92% from two. Well, currently playing for the Xinjiang Flying Tigers in the CBA against Puerto Rico, 16 points. But another change that Coach Sasha Georgievich has made, Fu Hao is coming to the lineup. Now, I like a little bit of his game. We saw a little bit of perimeter shooting and a bit of mid-range shooting. A little bit unorthodox, but what China needs is people to step up and hit the big-time plays. Yeah, no, we saw that lineup a little bit in, in the game yesterday with 
Kyle Anderson, Lee Kayar moving to that four spot. Fu Hao able to provide some shooting from the perimeter. So obviously they liked what they saw in that group, gonna start out here with it. And I would expect to see Lee Kayar playing out of that horn set they like so much, trying to get some advantages for him at the four. Well, China, as you said, moving Lee Kaya to the four roll. Traditionally, uh, you know, we talked about him being a predominant bull handler, but Sasha Georgievic making him at a power forward, as you mentioned, that it will be very, very interesting. But now let's talk about your old team. I mean, we talked about Bruno Fernando, but let's talk about Lucchini Gonzalez. His perimeter shooting in that game against the Philippines was phenomenal. Well, and that's what they need. They have to have one of these guards step up and knock down perimeter shots. That's always been an issue for Angola. You know the defense is gonna be there. They're gonna create as many easy baskets as they can, but at some point, somebody's gonna have to make threes for them to have a chance to win. Well, Silvio had a big game, of course. I mean, he was tough as nails. This team almost beat the Dominican Republic, so they go with Joseph Bango, Bruno Fernando, Kenny Gonsalves and Eduardo Francisco. I mean, they really believe in this young man, the guy who plays with Ben Pico. Yeah, the young 19-year-old there has drawn the toughest defensive assignment in every one of their games. So it'll be interesting to see if he starts out on Lee Kayar here. Well, Fernando currently playing for the Atlanta Hawks in the NBA. So far here at the FIBA Boston World Cup, averaging 13.3 points per game. But, you know, when you talk about mental toughness, resilience, that, that day that he rolled his ankle, that was a really bad roll but somehow he keeps going. Well, and they're gonna need him out there. Curious to see how the ankle is treating him, but obviously he's such an important key to their success. Sylvia De Souza there, one rebound away from a double-double for Angola. Well, you know what, it's about time that the great Charles Barkley says that he knows a lot about Angola and the opponents now are gonna be in trouble. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Silvio is actually the son of the famous uh, you know, Jacques Consoisau. So he, he's definitely got some experience to lean on there from his dad. They're gonna need him to play on that kind of level to have a chance of winning today. Well, we're just under two and a half minutes away from tip off, but you know, this is gonna be a big one. China, of course, needing results to go in their way as Venezuela will take on Japan. Remember, Japan got that very important victory against Finland. That was in the venue in Okinawa, as Japan are one of the hosts. So a lot for him to think about, you know, a lot of the, press conferences have been questions about him. Can we qualify for the Olympics? And Sasha Georgievich knows, yes, that's the goal. That's why we're here. We need to reassert ourselves as the best team in Asia. Yeah, must win situation for them. I think they understand the, the pressure that comes with that. Coach Georgievich has tried very hard to keep things loose and light with his group. I've had a chance to watch their shoot arounds. He's been joking around, playing shooting games with his guys, trying to get them to relax and find some offensive rhythm in these games. Well, now let's go and listen to what the coaches have to say in the build-up to this tip-off. Well, the official sponsor of this game, the Tissot Countdown and Tip-Off is on the way. And again, a big shout out and a thanks to our official sponsor, Tissot, for the great collaboration they've done with FIBA throughout the many years. Well, coach, one thing about I love about Pepe Harris, of course, you can see he really is doing a good job of speaking Portuguese, but at times I feel like he slips back into Spanish. <laughs> Well, you know, it's difficult. Uh, I found myself doing that when I was coaching the team. A lot of similarities there in the language, but uh, Coach Claro is doing a nice job with this group, really getting them to compete and play hard with their defense. Well, Bruno Fernando entering the court along with his teammates. China players already on the floor, shaking hands with each other, paying each other respect and homage. 
But you know when the tip is up, business will start to build up between these two teams. Well, quite a bit of history, not really so much between these two teams, but representation from their continents. Angola, historically one of the better teams in history of the FIBA Afrobasket, while China have the record for most FIBA Asian Cups. So, two teams that were Titans back in the day, but now everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome here to the Araneta Coliseum. China taking on Angola. Don't go anywhere as we're now set for tip. Well, Lee Kaya now finding Chi quickly, but they turn it over, and again, great recovery defense by Bruno Fernando. And Golden want to set the tempo early. Dundao got it back in the backcourt by Chow Ray. Gonzalez coming off one screen with Jilson Bango. Splits the defense, Bango under the basket. He'll go up, and that's just way too easy for Angola. Yeah, nice start there for Angola. Good little set play, getting Lukeni Gonsalves downhill and finding Bango on the drop off. Well, trying to have a quick turnaround from last night's game against Puerto Rico. Not a lot of time to rest and reflect. John Ray kicks out. Fu Hao made one three yesterday. Can't get this one to go. The foul is going to be called against Lukeni Gonsalves. Well, will get interested. They brought Fu Hao into side and lineup for China, maybe just to give them maybe that extra perimeter threat. But again, finding Jill Bango inside the paint. Well, Joe Chi just going right around him, not really being a rim protector there for China. Finds the big man under the basket. Trying to keep this one alive. Well, Bango unable to get the turnover since we five seconds on the shot clock here for China. Yeah, nice set play there on the uh, underneath out of bounds play. Back pick for Jochi. He's got to be able to finish those looks when he gets it that close to the basket. Bango trying to be aggressive here with Jochi. Who how took one three. And again, makes this one. And that's what China needs, a perimeter threat. And that's why he's in the game. Tried to spread that defense out a little bit. Open up some lanes for Lee Kaiar to penetrate. Salvas coming off the ball screen. Finds a separation. Yeah, good defense by Joe Chi. It's a wind up look at the corner. Rebound down secure there by John Zerlin. But finds the big man. And again, another turnover here. The third one of the game so far for Joe Chi. Fernando has a switch on defense. Got it by Joe Chi. It sinks a three pointer right in his face. Yeah, big shot there from Bruno Fernando. If he's able to knock those down, force Jochi to come out to the perimeter, that's going to be a tough matchup for China. Li Kaya trying to use the bull screen. Trying to find a separation, a little jump hook. Can't get it. Fernando with a rebound. Gomo trying to build up to a double. Two possession leaders are down now, fakes the screen. He tries a three-point again. He sinks that one. And Angola coming out like a house on fire right now. And if their guards make shots like that, it's going to be a long day for China. The game plan going underneath these screens, daring them to shoot, so far able to knock it down. Well, Joe Chi again, almost turning it over. Yo, it is a quick turnaround from last night, so a lot of these players are battling through physical and mental fatigue, but well, there's a three-pointer again by Joe Dow, nailing that one. And yeah, Golden fans enjoy the occasion there. <laughs> But Joe Chi right now, looking a little bit, you know, lost in the paint. Well, he has to keep the ball high. That's twice now we've seen him catch it close to the rim, bring the ball down where the Angolan players can slap at it. He needs to keep it high where it's going to be hard for anybody to reach up there. Wow, has to force up a tough one. Can't get it. That's going to be a 24-second violation. And China right now struggling to get into a good set offense. Yeah, right now the ball pressure of Angola really having an effect on China. Haven't seen them go back to the horns action we saw from them yesterday with Lee Kayar there at the four. Trying to find Lucchetti Gonsalves. Penetration down the middle. Finds Bango. Angola turn it over. China can try to get something, but China about to turn it right back over. Both teams just lacking a bit of control and composure here in the first quarter. 
Yeah, tough start here from China. Nothing really going their way at the beginning of this game. Angola able to hit two threes on them early. Goodell coming up for a double high screen. Fernando's made one three. This is what China needs now, trying to get something in transit, but an offensive foul is going to be called against Zhang Jilin. No composure or leadership right now here from China. There you see the arm getting up there against Eduardo Francisco. Another turnover for them in transition. Well, now Angola's going to get called for an illegal screen. Well, Dundao came off the ball screen with Fernando, I believe. He's able to keep his ground and stay, stay still. That's going to be very frustrating when you do commit those kind of fouls. Yeah, you know, both teams just struggling to, to find a rhythm here. Those offensive fouls obviously adding up. Yeah, that was the block shot by Joe Chi. Kaya trying to get in around the defense. Finds Joe Chi, the big man goes up and he gets the M1. And maybe that's the confidence he needs is Baby Yao. Jolin watches from the bench. Yeah, and I like that decision. We haven't seen a ton of pick and roll with Lee Kayar as the primary ball handler. Great job of finding Joe Chi on the roll here. Again, as you mentioned, Lee Kayar at the beginning of this game, we talked about him playing a power forward role. That was what he talked about, like, moving into that fourth spot. Right now, it looks like he is being that key facilitator in the backcourt. But you know, one thing that affects Lee Kaya's game, he doesn't pose much threat from the three-point line. Well, you know, really more of a playmaker than, than a natural scorer. And I think that's been the challenge. China really lacking the scoring punch to put around him. Defense is able to really collapse, force him to shoot it from the outside. China right now with only two field goals. Good down the lane, finds Lionel Paolo, the big man goes up, the veteran. Just checking into the game in his third FIBA Basketball World Cup now for Angola. Yeah, China needs to be better there defensively. The game plan has to be to stay compact, make this Angola team beat you from the perimeter. Right there we saw penetration from Dondao and uh, Lionel Paolo on the nice cut. Angola putting the full court man-to-man -man pressure. Zhang Zhelin and Li Kaya trying to get open there in the backcourt. Kaya now finding a bit of opening here in the backcourt. Zhang Jolin wide open on the perimeter. He takes the three. He sinks that one. Second trade ball of the game so far for China. Yeah, and I like this. Lee Kayar acting as the primary ball handler. Great cross court skip there. Bango top of the key now. Fernando's got a mismatch. Tries to go base on a Fu Hao. Gets caught a double team. It splits a double team down and draws another foul. Well, Coach, that double team just wasn't aggressive enough. Yeah, you can see uh, Coach Georgievich's frustration there. Jochi has to do a better job of getting his back foot behind the primary defender so that Bruno Fernando is not able to step through like he did there. Well, that's his first personal foul of the game. Fernando currently at the free throw line here for Angola. He's getting the shooter's roll on the first one. Well, that's what they need for John Jolin. You remember that game against Serbia, the opening game? You know, he came out first two shots in the game, three-pointer, back to a play, slam dunk, and you kind of felt, well, they may have a, you know, an, an option for a scoring go-to player. But since then, it's almost like hit and miss with him. You don't know which John Jolin you're going to get in which game. Well, John Jolin, definitely a shooter. You know, played at Tulane where he was known for knocking down threes. They're going to need him to make those open looks when they're created. Kaya now got it in the back court by Francisco. And the Benfica youngster is going to get called cool for the foul. Yeah, just a little too aggressive there from uh, Francisco. But you see here, Lee Kaiar acting as the point guard now, going to be the primary ball handler. This ha is something we haven't seen a lot of from him so far, but I like the decision here. 
Jare was wide open, but he go to John Joe Lynn for another three. Puts it up, can't get it. Coming out. And Dow just stopping that one from going out of bounds. Four point lead to Angola. Keeley now throwing it down low. Trying to come up with a loose ball, but can they get something here in transition? Trying to go for the spectacular, but falls in the hands. It goes up, and it's a scrappy hustle basket. But China will take those. Yeah, they need every break they can get. To now finding Lionel Paolo. He'll go for three points. Way too short, but Francisco just getting the offensive rebound. And that's going to frustrate Sasha Georgievic. China giving up way too many second chances for their opponents here in the FIBA Basel World Cup. John Ray spinning, pulling over. Lee now doesn't get the drop on it. Angola still with a four point lead. No look pass, Francisco goes in. And again, just goes in with a two headed rim rocker. Well, you like the transition there to Dow getting the ball, but you know, credit to Francisco running the fast break. Well, China's transition defense, nowhere to be seen, coach. Yeah, and you see the nice seal there from Kokila keeping the big off. But that's been the issue for China, giving up 100 points per game defensively so far. 21 fast break points for Puerto Rico in their last game. Angola wants to play fast, so you got to know it coming into here, your transition defense is important. Have patience. And there's a small guy here. Go, come, keep playing. Continuation, continuation. We got it. Move quick. Move quick. Hey, let's play two sides. Hey, two side four. Two side four. Ray. Ray. Ray, Kevin. Ray. Kyle is playing. Pass. Hand off. Now we are doing two out here. And Kyle. Roll. Roll, roll. Let's see if we can hit it. Well, again, there was the elbow, but John Jolin not boxing out Francisco. Something China have given up a lot in their games, but look at Francisco running transition. Well, playing for Benfica, they're going to go back into the FIBA Europe Cup. They had a phenomenal season in the Basketball Champions League with players such as Ivan Almeida, who does play for Capital Verde right now in the Okinawa venue of the FIBA World Cup. Yeah, you know, the young 19-year-old getting invaluable minutes here at this World Cup. Nice job there being in the right place on those offensive rebounds. Something Angola does incredibly well. Now be def well, defending Lee Kyer in the backcourt. John Ray coming off a ball screen. Nice pass in the lane. That's much better. Again, if this guy's come into the game, and all of a sudden making a big difference here for China. Beautiful well, pass Hu there Jin from Cho, Coach. We, you talked about him in the beginning of the game. Yeah, you know, I think Hu Jin Cho can definitely be uh, an X factor for them. Came in, gave good minutes, but beautiful pass there from Jao Ri, the wraparound with the left hand. Well, Silvio De Souza getting fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. It's been tough, though, because you would think in the build-up to a FIBA Basel World Cup, you naturally would know who your best five is, but that just hasn't been the case with China. Different players you know, feel like they're experimenting with a lot of different lineups. Well, you know, you get to this stage, you haven't won a game, you've been struggling, you're, you're looking to really try anything, and that's been the case here. We've seen Lee Kayar starting out the four, now moved over as the point guard. I think that's the best fit for him moving forward. Keep the ball in his hands, let him play pick and roll. He's created some nice shots that just haven't gone down yet for China, but I think consistently he's their best chance at creating good offense. Well, DeSouza makes the second free throw. Now it's still a five-point lead to Angola. Mikaya still being the predominant bull handler. Trying to try to orchestrate something in the backcourt. John Ray with the penetration. Mikaya fakes the pass, goes in. No foul calls. Now Angola have numbers. Domingos finds it. Sylvia De Souza goes up. And he gets the M1, and he will go to the free throw line. And you can see Sasha Georgievich. If you're going to foul him, foul him hard. Yeah, a lot of frustration there from Coach Georgievich. 
Again, China struggling with their transition defense. You know that Angola needs to live on these easy baskets, whether it's through fast break, creating offensive rebounds or steals. So far, China allowing Angola to do what they do best. Well, this is now a chance to make this an eight-point ball game here for Angola. It would have been a line violation, but the basket did count it now. Zhao Jiwei checking into the game for China. So Lee Kaya probably with Zhao Jiwei's introduction will move to that four roll that you talked about, Coach. China trying to move the ball around. Don't want this lead to get too big. Jiwei had the back door. Turns it over. Good defense by Domingos. The Sosa down the middle. Kicks out to Montero. This is good ball movement. Makanda wide open. Three is up. No good. It's another offensive board. But again, Angola coach, they are just more hungry at the moment. They want this game badly. Well, this is how they play. Up and down. Going to pressure you. Try to force you to play faster than what you want. And then on the other end, they are looking to run, try to get easy baskets off of offensive rebounds and layups. Well, nice hesitation there. They change the spade by Jao Ray. I mean, look, they, this guy does have a lot of promise, but you know, one thing that this team just needs right now is probably just a bit more presence inside and you know, just a little bit more knit and grit. Go for more offensive rebounds. But again, you mentioned transition defense and keeping their opponents on the offensive rebounds. That's been the big issue for China. Yeah, I mean, so far, Angola just coming out with a a lot more intensity than what China has. You know, obviously, if you can get Angola into the half court, try to stay compact, make them beat you from the outside, you've got a chance. But right now, Angola able to get out into the open court. Jare making the first free throw, cutting it back down to single digits. Angola fans just trying to put Jare off his free throws. When you hear uh, Coach Claros there calling out Nana, that's one of their favorite sets. Just a simple horns action with a pick and pop with the bigs. They've looked to go high-low often out of that. Two for two from the cherry stripe. And now Hu Ming Xuan coming into the game. Oh, it's going to be very tough for him to see the legacy that he built for Chinese basketball. Yao Ming has been in every game so far here for this Chinese national team. Just coming off one screen. There's the pop out. Conda down the middle. Hangs in the air, can't get it. But Joe G just can't grab the rebound. And the reaction there from Sasha Georgievich. Infuriated there with Joe G. Not a turnover. They throw it away. And Angola capitalized. Domingo spinning around. Well, that's going to be a turnover, surely. And a wasted opportunity there for Angola. Domingos here just a little bit out of control, but this is not the start you want if you're China. Seven turnovers already, five offensive rebounds. You know how Angola wants to play. They need to slow this down, make sure they get quality shots. Ubing Xuan thought about taking the three-pointer. Takes the mid-range. It's his own rebound. Joe Chi now finding an opening. Bumps in the lane, goes up. Doesn't get the ad one, but the big man will go to the free throw line. Four two shots, five offensive rebounds already for Angola. Only two coming for China. Yeah, I mean, Angola has done this all tournament so far. The leading offensive rebounding team at, at the World Cup. They're dependent on creating extra shots. Their shooting percentages just demand that they get these easy baskets from offensive rebounds and transition. So if you're China, you just have to stay disciplined. So far, they've allowed Angola to get out and run as much as possible. Well, Joe Chi currently the free throw line, struggled on his last trip. Makes a second one. Chinese fans still hopeful that today could be a victory for them. Remember, Japan, if they secure that victory in Okinawa against Venezuela, depending how other results go, that would see them qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics. So he's spinning, going baseline. Foul has been drawn. That's going to be the second personal foul against Yochi. 
Joe Chi just got tangled up there a little bit on his rotation late there on the contest against De Souza. I notice he has something around his back that we saw in the warm up, so it does appear that he is, a, you know, he does play limited minutes. It's very possible that he, you know, could be playing through a couple of injuries right now because he doesn't obviously look his usual self when he's played here in the FIBA World Cup. Yeah, you know, perhaps there's an injury there. You know, China right now, though, with the double big lineup, needs to do a better job of protecting the paint and rebounding. De Souza missing the second free throw. Zhao Jiwei currently in the backcourt. China trailing by 10. Back door here. Back to the big man. Much better play goes in. Again, it's going to be an ad one for Joe Chi. And that's much better. Well, Sasha Djordjevic was about to sub out of the game, so it's going to be a provisional substitution. That's what we're talking about. Finding ways to get the big man more t touches and more opportunities inside the paint. Yeah, great give and go there between Zhao Chi and Ji Wei. It's interesting, uh, you know, the chemistry we've seen with some of these players. So Lee Kai R back in the game right now. They've got to find that same chemistry with him. Change coming in. It's Fernandez. Changes into the game for the first time for Angola. Lee Kaya also. Well, Vasi counts as Fu Hao checks out, checks in. Sorry, Joe Chi will go to the bench. Finding that way to build that bond. The communication, of course, with Sasha Georgievich and his players. Oh, in the lane, De Sosa goes in with a reverse dunk. But what a dive by Domingos. Yeah, great pass there from Domingos. But if you're China, you need to be pulled in. That weak side defenders need to be there to help on those rolls. Make them kick out and beat you from the three. Well, it's going to be a debate now. Should this count? The foul is committed. Let's have a look at the replay. Well, there's the dive there. And the reverse dunk by Silvio. Love the movement here. This man is just simply an intelligent workhorse when he's on the floor for Angola. Well, he is an athlete and a strong one. We saw it on display in their last game. But again, just too much space there in the paint. You got to know Angola is not a great shooting team. We should see bodies in the paint all day for China. So the basket won't count for Hu Ming Xuan, but he will get two free throws. And there's the replay. Well, that's a good block there, just getting it before it touched the backboard. Now, had it touched the backboard, most likely it would have been accounted. Yeah, that's correct. But you see uh, De Sosa's athleticism there, you know, almost up at the square to get that shot. Hu Jin Cho getting the offensive rebound. Slight issue with the shot clock. Should be a fresh 14. I think the official's saying this should be. Yeah, an offensive rebounds. The shot clock reset to 14 instead of 24. So the official's right on top of that. So China will get it silent. I'm not sure if the officials are saying there should be nine or 10 seconds on the clock. This is what Martin Vulich and Johan Rosso, our three, our two officials out of our three officiating crew, are just deciding. So you have nine seconds. We'll be left. Lee Kaya will inbound this for China. Officials now already 49.9 seconds left here in the first quarter. China trailing by eight points. Finding Zhao Ji Wei. Six in now for Li Kai Ha. Got to get something going. As the penetration goes in, sounds like a damn woman. He'll go to the free throw line. That's two times now. China could have had an extra and one play. I mean, those are big time momentum shifters. Yeah, but I like this. Uh, Li Kai Ha. 
you know, able to get downhill now a couple of times as that primary ball handler in their pick and roll. I think with the lineup that they have right now without any real true low, low, low post score, they should continue to explore that. Well, the man who plays for the Minnesota Timberwolves, the first non-Chinese born player to play represent China at a FIBA Basel World Cup. But obviously through his heritage, his Chinese ancestry through his grandmother. Makes them both now, cutting it down. Six point deficit. Well, trying to get a stop here. That could be a potential two for one for them, but there's a kick out. Montero wide open, takes a three. Through house and kills a rebound now. China looking to push. Four seconds difference between game and shot clock. Nikaya hesitating. Now we're under 10 on the shot clock. Chow Ji Wei, he's got to get it. Well, there's a three by Hu Ming Shuan. Puts it up, and he's fouled in the process. Well, so Hu Ming Shuan will go the free throw line now for three free throws. Yeah, he's uh, the young Jose Makonda. Just didn't give him enough space to land. Frustrating there. Angola had done a nice job of pressuring, really forced China into a tough shot. You see it right there. Getting a little too close to Ming Xuan's uh, landing space. Well, this potentially could cut it down to a three-point ball game. Makonda just getting caught out there on the closeout. And Angola, who would lead him by 11 points, all of a sudden that could be chipped down to just three if he makes all three of these. Yeah, and if you're China here, you need to be careful. You know Angola is going to try to play quickly. Make sure, and you can see it right now, they're pulling guys off the free throw line. You want to make sure you've got bodies back there to slow down Domingos. Makes all three free throws. Domingos trying to push the tempo. And again, he turns it over. A big turnaround there for China. And maybe, just maybe, China looking for their first victory here in the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Currently trailing by three points, Angola. Shifting and changing their lineup so far, but you know, they've looked like their usual self. Very aggressive, going in for offensive rebounds, but at the moment, only two three points. Well, you know, you would expect that uh, their three point shooting has not been good in this World Cup. I think if you're China, you've got to be happy. I mean, all things really not going your way, yet here you are just three points down at the end of that quarter. Well, there are your statistics, but momentarily, we're going to look at the best plays here from the first quarter. Well, Lucchetti going in the lane, finding Gilson Pango. That was the very first play of the game, and you kind of felt that was going to dictate the tempo of the first quarter. But China holding a little bit more resistance. Well, they just have to put more bodies in the paint. Make Angola beat you from the perimeter. 27 points in that first quarter, just too much for a team that has been struggling offensively. Good rim protection from Joe Chi. There's a big pop find in Bruno Fernando. You wonder if Fernando's ankle injury has played up because he didn't play a lot of minutes here in the first quarter. Maybe a case of Pep Claros just maybe preserving his minutes. To, I don't know, but what do you think? Well, you know, Pep has gone with a lot of bodies throughout this tournament, not afraid to bring anybody off the bench at any time. De Sosa gave them good minutes when he came in the game, so maybe that was part of it. Well, the Angola fans loving the occasion. Getting the Transition done by Francisco. There is the QR code for courtside 1891. Get all the best streams, scores, and schedules that matter to you most. The official platform brought to you by FIBA for the 19th edition of World Basketball's highest competition. Use that QR code and get courtside 1891 today. Looks like Fernando is going to come back on the court with Jilson Bango, Shilde Dundell. Now, how would you rate Francisco's game and sort of give him a. What is it about his game? What does he offer? We know he's a phenomenal athlete. You know, he's got a very, a very high tempo and hunger to go for a, for a lot of second chances. But what's so unique about his game? Well, you see the length on him. You know, tremendous defender, and he's had some tough matchups, getting the best player of the opponent in every game so far. 
I remember him as a young 15-year-old in Angola. You could see the potential there. Went to Benefica, has continued to develop. If he can develop that perimeter jump shot to go that defense, he's going to be playing at a very high level. Well, China just making a change with Lee Kaya's goggles. He had a slight issue yesterday with the has to take them off. Jiao Angola getting the first possession. Jiao Ji Wei trying to be aggressive here on defense. Really, the foul is going to be cool. The mismatch between Bruno Fernando being guided by Fu Hao. He has a previous games coach, Fu Hao. Well, Coach Djordjevic continuing to try to find anybody that can consistently help them offensively. Dudal coming up a pick and pop. Fernando going baseline. Good hands. But still comes up with it. Again, the rejection by Lee Kaya. And then the follow up again, offensive rebounds. It's been the story of the game. But well, Huming Xuan running transition. It's going to go up and finish this one. And finally, China getting what is arguably the best transition play of the FIBA Vassal World Cup. Yeah, one of the few uh, transition layups we've seen from them. Well, great job by Huming Xuan. It's a sprinting transition, but now Fernando. Double team coming. Dundal left wide open. He goes to three. Right in the face of Lee Kaya. Can't get it. The foul is going to be called against Hu Ming Xuan. Well, look at this, Li Kai. Yeah, really great block there from Li Kai. That was not right at the summit, too. Yeah, just not able to come up with that loose ball. That's kind of been the story so far in this game. China unable to finish off a lot of these defensive possessions. Now we're under 10 here on the shot clock. Good Dow going all the way, avoiding the block, and again using the backboard. Strong move by Shieldy Dundell. Only leading by five points. Lee Kaya now. We're under 10 here on the shot clock. That's going to be a kickball violation. So a fresh 14 here for China. Well, currently, China. With Zhao Jiwei on the court as a point guard, Hu Ming Xuan also. Li Kaya, Fu Hao, and Hu Jin Cho will play the bigs. And Sasha George is there, you can see. And as we've already mentioned, it's about trying to find a core of five players that want to be consistent here for this Chinese team. Yeah, they've really uh, struggled to find an offensive identity. Seem to be going to Li Kaya as their point guard here with a lot of the sets. Hoomik Schwan now steps up for another three-pointer. Can't get it, but they're going to call a push in the back against Fu Hao. Fernando right now here for and seven points, but, you know, Sylvia De Souza, no surprise to see him already the top scorer for this Angola team. Yeah, I mean, he had a great game against the Dominican Republic, really has uh, picked up where he left off from there. Dow coming off a ball screen. Trying to find Fernando. Joe Chi back in the game. It's a good matchup between these two. Joe chi has got two fouls. Fernando going in. But Jilson Bango, same story. Offensive rebound for Angola. Yeah, and uh, this has got to be frustrating for Coach Djordjevic. Right now, Angola going with that three big lineup in addition to Eduardo Francisco. So really no shooting at all on the floor for them. China just has to stay in the paint, make sure they finish off those possessions. Well, again, Hu Jin Cho getting a nice look. He is doing the simple things right now. Setting ball screens, flashing it to the middle. Role plays is what China needs right now. Li Kai almost coming up with a steal. Good hands, China come up with it. Can they get something quick? George with saying, push the tempo. Going down to the big man. Hu Jin Cho goes up. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, this is positive from this man for China. Hu Jin Cho. Yeah, Jin Cho giving them really solid minutes there. Nice early seal out of transition and a much better defensive possession that time. You saw the bodies in the paint really trying to congest things. You 
see uh, Jin Cho here drawing the foul, but that's how China needs to play defensively. Perhaps even go to a zone. I've been curious uh, that, that you know, we haven't seen a lot of teams doing that against Ang Angola, but with the lack of shooting that they have on the court right now, just have to make them stay out on that perimeter, take as many threes as possible. Well, free throws need to be a key aspect here for China. Wu Jin Cho currently the charity stride, makes the first one. Well, China cannot afford it to this become a double digit deficit. Now, there's no Joe Payne today. Yes, he rolled his ankle against Puerto Rico, so that is also a big loss for China. Yeah, they miss his shooting for sure. You know, interestingly, we haven't seen Wang Jilin come into the game yet. Looks like maybe Hu Jin Cho is getting those minutes. Angel Lin really struggling against Puerto Rico. Fernando here in the low block. Goes in the lane, draws another round one. And that's going to be against Joe Chi, and that's his third personal foul, I believe. Yeah, and they just have to be better than that. Joe Chi should be in position at the rim. Should not be caught off guard at all. They should be able to throw a lot of bodies on any of these post touches. You see just too much space there. Joe Chi not ready to help on that rotation. Well, look at the move there by Fernando. He has hit the ground. It does look like he's in a bit of pain, but hopefully he's going to be okay. Now China has to go smaller as Chang Jilin coming into the game. Looking to extend this to a six point ball game. Fernando missed the free throw. But it's the same story again. Well, Francisco on the floor here. And that's gonna go back, back to uh that's gonna go back to Angola, baseline ball. China don't box out. He's gotta think, what do I need to do with this team to make them tougher? Yeah, this is what Angola does best. Creating extra possessions through offensive rebounds, loose ball hustle. Five point lead to Angola. Bango under the basket. Too big, too strong. He'll go to the free throw line for two shots. I mean, coach, just too easy right now for Angola. Just getting the ball inside the paint and dictating everything against the Chinese defense. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen them be more compact defensively. You saw in that possession, Hu Jin Chao all the way out on the perimeter. You know, Fernando, yes, he has made one three in this game, but you've got to pack the paint, make them beat you from the outside, put as much size in there to make sure you're getting these rebounds. So far, allowing Angola to have their way inside the paint. Well, Bango making the first free throw. 6.55 to go here in the second quarter. Chinese fans behind the basket trying to put off Bango. Well, this would be monumental for Angola if they pick up the second victory here at the FIBA Basel World Cup. I think if we had two teams, two African teams with victory side, if South Sudan, I'm saying hypothetically, they were to win, that would be a monumental game between Angola and South Sudan. Yeah, no question about it. I think there's a strong likelihood that, you know, whatever the outcome is here today, that the winner of that game could represent Africa at the Olympics. Well, Humi Schwan getting fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. The foul is going to be against Bruno Fernando. It's much better play there by Humi Schwan. Nice take there. We haven't seen that young backcourt playmaking uh, lineup that they've gone with, with uh, Tui Yong Shi added to this mix. That group had some chemistry with those guards able to get downhill. Right now, continued offensive struggles for China. Well, makes the first free throw. He does play at a sudden speed. I mean, we watched him play in the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers, also in the FIBA Basel World Cup qualifiers too. But, you know, with him, he can be a key difference. What he needs is just a little bit more composure in his game, try to see what's ahead of him. But definitely the speed of this young man. He knows how to play high tempo. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, these young guards have come in and at times shown what the future of Chinese basketball can be like. Well, the last time China won the FIBA Asia Cup was in 2015 when they defeated Gilas Filipinas in the final, qualifying for the 2016 Rio Olympics as Bango goes straight to the basket. It just seems like every time he gets the ball coach, he's going back to the free throw line. 
Well, again, you know, with this big lineup of Angola, they're going to try to seek out the matchup that they like the best in terms of size. I think China maybe should think about going zone here. You saw Zhao Ri there getting buried underneath the rim. They're having a problem keeping these guys outside of the paint. Well, five point lead to Angola. Benfica's Francisco currently the free throw line. Makes the first one. Chinese fans right behind the basket again, doing everything they can to put him off. This is the second one, and finally, China keeping Angola off the offensive boards. Jerry had an opening. Crosco but throws it right away, and Sasha Georgia is just saying, why? Not a foul committed. Last week, two more free throws coming up for Shilde Dundao. Yeah, and the turnover is leading to fast break opportunities for Angola. Even on those passes, you don't have time to put your head down. You've got to immediately move to the next play, sprint back, try to get people in front of you. Just have not been able to keep Angola out on the perimeter enough in this first half. We can see Sasha George is saying to his team, his team, guys, huddle up, have a talk, something, get to get. Nobody, no leadership right now from this Chinese team. Yeah, they look a little bit out of sorts. Uh, you know, Zhang Zhenlin picking up his third foul there. Seems like he's going to stay in the game, but they just have not found a way to make Angola go to their weaknesses. I think I'd like to see them go to a zone or, or try some kind of different look. Man to man just really hasn't been working for them. Well, no communication, another turnover. This out comes up and it goes out of bounds. And that will remain Angola ball. Look at the replay. Oh, that should be China Bull. Yeah, the referee is going to review this. That clearly came off of Jill Bango. Yeah, Coach Georgievich uh, asking for the challenge there. I think he'll get it kind of early in the game to go to that, but trying to find anything to get some momentum. Let's go slowly. Now we have white, white, go, go, go. White, white touch. Okay. Here is white, okay? okay? White, 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 white. Go out of bounds. So, after review, the turn will be over -called. The call will be overturned, and we will uh, restart the game before the Red Bull baseline throw-in, okay? I will show. So our two referees, Johan Rosso of France and Mart Vulic of Croatia, they've decided to overturn the decision. So a successful coach's challenge from Sasha Georgievich. to go here in the second quarter. China, this is a classification game. But more than just that, of course, these two teams fighting for a spot at the 2024 Paris Olympics. John Ray trying to put the moves on. Down low finds John Jolin. Much better played. He gets the M1. And the Chinese fans in this building, they love it. Yeah, really nice drop off play there from Zhao Ri. He said a great job of creating for others, getting downhill as you see the beautiful pass here to Zhang Xinlin. The crazy part about it is China aren't exactly playing very well at the moment. They're only trailing by five points. Yeah, I mean, if you're China, really things have not been going your way, giving up offensive rebounds, too many turnovers, and yet here you are in striking distance. So defensively, can they find a way to stay compact, finish off these misses with rebounds? Well, John Jolin unable to convert the three-point play. Yeah, and you see the zone here for the first time. So they've gone to the 2-3. I like this decision. Well, Fernando getting caught in the zone. Kicks out to the Dow, wide open for three. And again, it just punishes them with a three-pointer. Sasha Georgevich, he has to pull timeout because his team defensively lacking identity. You know, you see Dundao getting, uh, getting the three here, but if you're China, you can't let one possession dictate what you're going to do moving forward. You have to live with Dundao trying to beat you from the perimeter. I like the decision of going to the zone. Hopefully that one possession doesn't scare them away from it.
Yes, he must pass up. Go, we gotta go for the shoot. Okay. 51. Name Shen. Kevin. Go. Kyle. Okay. Ball. Make a back pick here. You have to receive the ball. Now you receive the ball. Okay. Kevin. For me, Shen. You're flaking. 51. Okay, and after that, in. Okay. Let's go. Hey. Well, there was Bruno Fernando, the first three-pointer for him of the game. The bigger pop with Shilde Dundao. Lee Kayat trying to go for that teardrop. Bruno Fernando for me, I mean, he is just a jack of all trades on the floor. So many things he can give this national team. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, you know, an inside-outside presence. And one of the few players who, who is capable of knocking down a three when they go to that huge lineup, which they still are uh, staying with, he's really the perimeter threat for them. China trying to get the ball inbound. Just over five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Trailing again by eight points. where they need to make a big play, but they talk. Silvio De Souza almost came up with a loose ball there. It would have been another Chinese turnover. But Angola give China with six seconds on the shot clock. A little glimmer of hope. Yeah, but those sets where they have Lee Kaiar in the corner, I just don't think they're effective. Lee Kaiar, not really a great shooter, needs to be involved more in what they're doing offensively. Well, back to a Chow Ray. Pump fakes, got to get it off in time. Three is up, three is good. No, it's going to be a 24 second violation. No wow, let's have a look at the replay. Remember, coach, if the time expires, it has to be the red light that takes presence over everything. But let's look at the replay. There's a pump fake. I think uh, he got that off in time. I think he did, and uh, you know that's where Coach Georgievich wishes he had that challenge yeah. back. Well, he definitely got that one off in time. Yeah, China's still in the 2-3 zone. I think this is the right decision. Good down, why did it? Kick out to the perimeter. Three is up. That's way off the mark. The silver, another offensive ball. But you can see there, Francisco making it very hard for China. Yeah, the key is going to be rebounding these misses. So, you know, sometimes when the misses are that bad, it can be hard to try to judge the where that ball is going to go. But you know that Angola is coming to crash on every shot. Get a body on them and try to control these defensive rebounds. Eight points of separation. Now it's under four and a half here in the first half. Mikaya kicks out. John Jillin had the three. Mikaya hangs up in there. Gets rejected. Well, the Souza in the insurance policy here for Angola. And it goes for a baseline pass, but they turn it back over. Willie Schwan goes for another three. Man, it's just not dropping for him. It goes out of bounds. Now will be. Angola ball. Well, look at the block shot by Fernando. Yeah, incredible play from De Sosa. You can see there, Lee Kayar actually holding or trying to hold his arm off. Still able to come up with the block. Great play there from De Sosa. Francisco coming off the ball screen. China staying in the zone defense. The down made one three. Goes for another. Let's get this one, but finally Angola don't come up with an offensive board. They can't try to cut down the deficit. Oh, Jin Cho looking for the post up. Now is your time. Finds Luke Kyer on the lane. It's going to be another M1 here for China to get a bit of better ball movement from the Chinese players. Yeah, great offensive oh, possession there from China. Ball went inside. Hu Jin Cho with a, a lot of patience there, waiting for the split screen up top. Lee Kaiar coming off of that beautiful pass and finish there. Well, Pep Claris wanted to talk it over with his players at the moment. He's trying to have a chance to cut this down to a five-point ball game. Let's go and listen to what these coaches have to say. Is available at the finish of all the 
No puede ser. Él es, utiliza la zona. Eduardo, vas a resalto y ni salta. Estás a la olla. Coño, uno que va, que fica frente. En ataque, cuando llevamos tres contra zona, bloqueo aquí. Siempre ataca un medio. Extremo. Eduardo, ahora es Leo. Leo, corta y fica frente. Él le va a ayudar como él faz como Next Defense. Shield, ves aquí, te hago otra vez lanzamiento más. Si no, Eduardo, Leo, gané por esta abajo. ¿Sí? Hay que subir, si no estás pronto, down. Ataque no, porque hay que estar con energía a tope ahora. Hay que estar con Well, China searching for belief, but again, big, big production so far from Hu Jin Cho in this game. You know, hasn't had a lot of playing time in the first two games, but you know, this is what China needs, people to step into the mix and really contribute. Yeah, nice minutes there from Hu Jin Chao so far, and you heard Pep Carlos in their timeout trying to explain how he wants to attack this 2-3 zone, looking to seal and set some screens on the outside of the zone, seeing if they can get high lows off those seals. But I think this has been a nice move from Coach Djordjevic, uh, putting China in that 2-3, making sure that they stay compact, forcing Angola to beat them from the outside. Well, it's gonna be a three-point play potentially here for Lee Kaya. 3.29 to go in the first half. China just need those beliefs, those big plays. Doesn't get it yet again. Lionel Paolo with a re rebound for Angola. Six point ball game. China going back to a man to man defense. That's going to be a foul. It's going to be a foul, they're going to go to the free throw line, so team fouls against China. Kenny Gonzalez, you know, a guy that struggled from the perimeter in that opening game against Italy, but really turned things around here on this court against the Philippines. Right now, you know, he's the kind of player that can be an X-factor that can, if he gets his confidence going from the perimeter, get a few wide open looks, this game could be done and dusted. Yeah, really streaky score. Uh, you know, Lucini Gonsalves, as a young player, we brought him into the national team fold. Some pressure on him to kind of carry the torch from Carlos Moraes as that next big score for the Angola national team. Well, Moraes, one of the legends of Angola basketball. His first FIBA World Basketball Cup was in 2006 in Saitama, Japan. Kaya now looking to go in and around the defense. Goes in a tough one, gets another round one. That's back to back at once for Lee Kaya. A chance now if he can make this to cut it down to a four point ball game. Yeah, you see DeSosa there on the arm. Like the aggression here from Lee Kaya, able to create off the dribble, both for himself and his teammates. But can he convert the three point play? Still struggles from the free throw line. Trying to find them, trying to find ways to compete defensively here against Angola, but the key thing for them is keeping Angola off the offensive boards. Fernando down the middle, puts too much on that one. Another turnover. Yeah, much better job there from China, keeping their guy in front. You see them going underneath all these ball screens on the perimeter trying to stay square with their man, force them to beat them with jump shots. Well, much better defense by Zhang Jolin. Right now, Bruno Fernando just needs to find a bit of composure in his game. Silvia De Souza checking out. Well, this is the problem with China's offense, too much standing around. John Ray now going all the way with a left-handed leg. That's much better. Now it's a three-point bowl game. Yeah, great take there from Jao Ray. He's got a size advantage there on Jerson Domingo. Should be interesting to see if they try to exploit that through the post as well. Well, there's a kick out. Trying to find Lionel Paolo. Doesn't get it. Now China with two minutes to go. A two-pointer will... Cut it down to a one point ball game. A three will tie it up. We try our quarter double team, and that's going to be another foul. And that's going to be free throws coming up for China. Pep Claros not happy with his players' defense here at the moment. 
Yeah, and you can see that zone has really bothered Angola. China is doing a nice job of staying compact, make them beat them on the perimeter, and have also controlled the boards much better over this final th four to five minutes here. Well, finally, Lee Kaya getting the free throw to drop. Confidence needs to be the key thing for this man. He's been fantastic so far, leading this Chinese team. Makes them both. And now it's a one-point ball game. Angola with it with dominating everything inside the paints. China going back to his own defense. Now, where do you think Angola's going to attack this zone? Well, they've gone to this weave action into the middle pick and roll. Well, there's a three by Liu Kenny. Three is up. No good. Li Kaiya with a chance now. Can China take the lead? Well, Hu Jin Cho is wide open. Li Kaiya bumpy goes up and gives China a one point lead. Yeah, great take there from Li Kaiya. So patient with his pace. Knew he had a size advantage. Just dipped that shoulder a little bit and finished there. China trail by 11. Now they lead by one. Angola needs something here. Liu Kenny looking to attack. Finds Buda Fernando, and that's a big time tuck by the Atlanta Hawks superstar. Yeah, and Lee Kayar has to be better there on the perimeter. Needs to close out short, make Liu Kenny stay out on that, on that three point line. So Lee Kayar nowhere to go, throws it away, out of control. Liu Kenny looking to go coast to coast. Domingo's wide open, three is up, no good. They're trying to secure the rebound. 10 seconds difference between game and shot clock. Zhao Ray going all the way, will this count? No, it's on the ground. But it will be two free throws nonetheless here for China. China are in the penalty. Yeah, that's the right call, you saw the dribble just after the whistle there, but this is uh, this is how Angola is going to look to penetrate that zone. So really one of the first times in the last three or four minutes they've been able to find a gap in that 2-3 zone. China doing a much better job of staying compact, make them beat them from the perimeter. Well, you saw the big play there by Bruno Fernando. Fernando does have two personal fouls. John Ray unable to make the first free throw. But does have a chance here to tie this game. That's a smart move by Pep Claros taking Bruno Fernando out as he does have his second personal. John Ray ties the game up, 45 apiece. Angola looking to get the final shot. Nine tenths difference between game and shot clock here. Kenny looking to go all the way, tries to kick out. Get a board wrestle. Kenny pump fakes, three is up, no good. And Lee Kaya, the end of the first half. Well, almost a tough one, but we're all locked up here at 45 apiece in a classification game between China and Angola at the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. We're live here at the Araneta Coliseum in beautiful Manila. Moment. It's been a spirited comeback here from China, Coach. Yeah, and I think China has really found something there with that 2-3 zone. Having defensive struggles throughout this World Cup so far, looked like things were starting out the same way with Angola able to get to the rim, get to the paint. When they made that switch, now doing a nice job keeping Angola out in the perimeter. You can see just three for 14 from three-point line in this first half. Well, China's only taken six three-pointers, but 24 free throws. Look, if you make all seven of those free throws, you're up by seven points, and that is the importance of going to the charity strike. But there's the key difference, Coach. 23 rebounds to 14, but we expected that. Well, I mean, that's what Angola does best, leading the World Cup with 18.7 offensive rebounds. They have 12 so far in this half, but most of those came in that first quarter. So better job of China keeping them to the perimeter and only allowing them one shot per possession. Well, look at the matchups here for the key players, Lee Kaya and Bruno Fernando. Well, 
Well, Joe Chi, excuse me. Bruno Fernando, six rebounds away from a double-double. Joe Chi, only six points, but limited minutes. And I'm starting to wonder if there's a potential back injury, because you always do see he has something. I don't know if it's a heat pad or whatever. He's always strapping on when he comes back onto the floor. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if there was an injury or not, but interestingly, when he got that third foul, that's where China found their rhythm. You know, Hu Jin Chao did a really nice job of filling those minutes for them. Maybe they'll give him the start here in the second half. Well, here are some of the key highlights from the second quarter. The block there by Lee Kaya. I mean, that was almost millimeters away from being the goaltending. That's how high he elevated. Yeah, great play there from Lee Kaya and the help. Well, there was the transition play. You saw Hu Ming Xuan sprinting when they came up for a rebound. But nice play there by Shilde Dundao, avoiding any block. I mean, that's over a seven-foot player almost. Yeah, well, that was the issue, though, before they went to the zone, allowing the guards to get downhill, allowing them to find post touches. Much better job once they went to that 2-3 of keeping their man out on the perimeter. Oh, good play so far by Hu Jin Cho. The dime coming there from Lee Kaya. Finding other players to step up has been the key thing for China. And in this game so far, Hu Jin Cho has been great along with Lee Kaya, but also this man, Zhao Rei, finding ways to split the defense down. Well, you know, Zhao Rei has been their most consistent playmaker in this World Cup, continuing to do a great job of penetrating finding teammates like he did there. Well, this is Lee Kaya's second one. That was a block shot by Sylvia Souza. That's his solid rim protection by the big man from Angola. Here is Hu Jin Cho finding Lee Kaya, the one of his two and ones he's had so far here in the second quarter. But it was a big monumental place for China. Yeah, and that was one of their better half court possessions. You saw the split screen action. Lee Kaya slipping out of there, finding the layup. Well, the big dunk by Bruno Fernando. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in just under 12 minutes for the second half. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. It's rejected. Well, Wedya Gabriel with the rig protection. Almeida. And the pass knocked away this time. Doncic with the steal. The kick out. The finish. Rebelich. <laughs> Bine Prepelich there. There's two Prepeliches on the floor. They're cousins. Turnover waiting to happen, but guess he's picked it up. For China, it's a wide open look for the perimeter. Oh, puts it right between the legs and again. Oh, baby! That is officially Buenas Noches. Hey, coach, that's put a smile out of you. Let me tell you something right now. The magician. Oh, watch the nutmeg. You miss the nutmeg. Vice Romero. He's going to walk up again. Hands it off to Antonio the Campo for the jump. Great awareness from Walkup. Bohm's trying to stay in front of Doncic. He's spinning, fade away on the left. Glass helps him out. Doncic now with 19. 95% of that jumps. He's a really good job. The power's going to have to put it up from the logo. I'm not sure that was what coach drew up, but it doesn't matter anyway. It's just trying to see him say, whoo. Tavares right into Doncic's hands. Doncic, Euro, extra fast, summer. Doncic to summer. Nice read, wasn't it? He knew he had to 
two in front. Luka Doncic looks a slightly perturbed. He is, and clearly he's not happy with his form. One of nine from the field. You can look at his numbers there, 12 points, and now Banquero for the throwdown. Well, they went to that middle isolation for him, and he went to work, nice spin, and dunk.
back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half about to get underway here. 24 free throws already. 24. 24. L1-2, L1-2. Yeah, go get your L1-2. Yeah. Take like you're coming to step for me. Okay. Sorry, Well, Coach, it's been a big turnaround for China so far for the first half, but, you know, momentum is going to be key here in the first few minutes of the second. Well, uh, I would expect to see China back in that 2-3 zone, giving Angola a lot of problems once they, once they went to it late in the second quarter there. Angola just 3 for 14 from the three-point line, uh, but 12 offensive rebounds for 15 second-chance points there. You heard Pep Claros in that timeout talking about the fact that China already has 24 free throw attempts in the first half. Angola has to do a better job of staying solid with their defensive pressure. Now, would you, there's the QR code, ladies and gentlemen, get the official FIBA Basel World Cup app downloaded to get all the best news, stats, and highlights that matter to you most. Remember, that's the official FIBA Basel World Cup app downloaded on your smartphone, tablet, or Android. Now, would you expect China to stay back in that 2-3 zone you mentioned? Yeah, I think absolutely. Uh, found a lot of success there in keeping Angola on the perimeter. Uh, I would expect to see a lot more of that here in the second half. Well, only foul they committed. This one's going to be against Shildi Dundao. Angola, you know, it's going to be very interesting in this classification round because they are with South Sudan. Those two teams will meet each other. We could see two African teams with a victory, which would make that game very, very intense. Yeah, well, even if uh, Angola were to lose that head-to-head -head matchup, because one of those teams is going to get a win with the other getting a loss, I think it could come down to point differential. Well, John Jolin got it by Jilson Bango. Hangs up in the air. Well, nice move there. Could have finished that one. Angola looking to restore a bit of order here, trying to retake the lead. Trying to get lead by one point in the second quarter, but that was quickly turned around. Go on baseline, turns it over, no foul called. John Ray comes up with a loose ball. Down the middle, kicks out. Hu Ming Shuang, wide open, takes it, fires it, and that's a big three pointer for him. Yeah, great play there from Zhao Ri. Getting deep penetration, having the wherewithal to find the corner kick out there for Ming Shuang. And go the trail by three points. China's biggest lead so far of the game. Claro saying to his players, get it to our motion set. Let's go. Pump face has to put up a Hail Mary three-pointer. And that's going to be a 24-second violation. Yeah, the start that Angola wanted here in the second half. Yeah, nice defensive possession there. China actually in a man-to-man -man defense. Went to a switch late in the shot clock there against the pick and roll. And you see they went with uh, Hu Jin Chao as the starting big. Great minutes from him in the first half. Oh, quick turn over there. That's going to be an Oh, wow. Coach, I need your assessment on that one because it looked to me like the foul caused the travel. Well, Lee, Lee Kayar for sure was trying to take a foul here. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I think the 19-year-old the shaking his head too. That's a tough break there for Angola. But one thing I like about Pep Claros, we did see him get a technical foul in the game against the Philippines, but you know, he doesn't seem to argue too much when decisions don't go in his favor. They kind of find it, Zhao Rei. Trying to look to extend the lead, but again for them, it's about taking care of the basketball. Hu Ming Xuan down the lane, puts a little teardrop, can't get this one. And Gola still looking for their first field goal here in the second half. Almost turning that over. Good defense by Lee Kaya. Mando puts the ball on the floor, goes up, and he can't finish it. But this is what Joseph Bango does good. He gets the offensive board and the putback. And that's the first two points of the game. Yeah, China has to be more physical with their blockouts there. You saw Bango just able to go right above Lee Kaya for the offensive rebound. Lee Kayar, as you mentioned, well, Bango just going over the top of him. Go, 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 
Lee Kenny trying to be aggressive here on defense against Hu Ming Xuan. Jin Cho now looking for a post up against Bruno Fernando. He made his last three, takes another one again. He's 6 2, three pointers in a row here in the second half. And all of a sudden, coach, the confidence in China's play just building slowly but surely. Yeah, Jin Cho with another great kick out from the low post. Finds Bango under the basket. He goes up. Can't finish this one. He's got to take advantage of that. Francisco trying to be disciplined here on defense against Lee Kaya. Well, Hu Ming Xuan thought about it, but good close out on defense by Shilde Dundell. Three seconds now. Jao Ray. That goes out of bounds with nine tenths of a second left. Now, if you were coaching here, would you call a timeout with 9, 10 seconds left on the shot clock, or would you just try and let your players figure this one out themselves? Yeah, I think early, too early in the uh, in the game to call a timeout here. China should have some kind of play they know for these late clock situations. Looking for a backdoor uh, back screen or pop out three. Well, John Jolin got the shot off in time. I touched the rim. They're saying he didn't get it off in time. The shot definitely did touch the rim. We'll have to see the replay of that. But remember, it's got to be the red light that takes presence over everything. Four point lead to China. Back to back three pointers by Hu Ming Xuan. Giving them the lead so far here in the second half. Yeah, and back in the 2 3 zone here for the first time in this half. Kenny going down low. Put the defense, draws a foul, he'll go back to the free throw line. Nice penetration by Liu Kenny Gonsalves. Yeah, but Zhang Jinlin, you know, not only picking up his fourth foul here, but he needs to do a better job of keeping Gonsalves out on the perimeter, allowing him to get downhill with the penetration, and just a little too much body there on the finish. Kenny has had his struggles to the free throw line. We've seen so far here in the group stage. But no problem making the first one. And Coach Georgievich keeping Jin Lin in the game right now. This is the second one. Zhang Jin Lin with a rebound. Find Hu Ming Xuan. Hu Ming Xuan's going to go up all the way. He avoids the block. And he has eight points so far here in the third quarter for China. Yeah, great start to this second half for Ming Xuan. Nice job of leaking out there and a good pass from Jin Lin, finding him streaking down the court. China staying in the 2 3 zone. Goal to trailing by five. Trying to move the ball around. Well, it takes a slight deflection, goes out of bounds. It'll be Angola ball on the baseline with six seconds left on the shot clock. And Zhang Jin Lin will now officially lead the game here for China. So coming in is Zhu Jun Long. Well, the Dow's got to get something going. Lukeni from no man's end. Goes out of bounds, but that will go back to Fernando trying to contest for the offensive rebound. Yeah, not a good possession there from Angola. Ending up with a deep three-point attempt there from Gonsalves. They have to find ways to try to penetrate through that zone. You saw them go to a set that uh, Coach Obradovic, the great Serbian legend, likes to use where he's screening the inside of the 2-3 zone at the top. Let's see if they use that again. Jao Ray finding Ju Chen Ho goes all the way. The big man. Well, he's looking like a Chinese Tim Duncan right now. Everything coming inside the paints. Yeah, he has been great for them, delivering once again here. Coach Djordjevic going with the start for him here in the second half. Well, second top, top joint score along with Lee Kayari. He has 10 points. China with their biggest lead of the game. Now it's seven points. Dundal makes the contact. They go to the free throw line for two shots. Yeah, but again, Hu Ming Xuan has to be better in that situation. He's allowing Dundao to penetrate from that top position. Just stay square. Make him beat you with perimeter jump shots. 
She's so quick and explosive. How many players we've, been, we've seen so far here in the group stage have been able to keep up with players such as Shilde Dundao and, you know, Jess and Domingos for that matter as well. Just to their speed and agility. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, two little jitterbugs there in the backcourt. If you're Ming Xuan, you just have to be solid there. There's really no need to pressure out in that perimeter. Make them shoot it off the dribble. Well, there you go, good defense. The Dow comes over, and now that becomes a four-point play for Angola. China's seven-point lead, dissected down to three. That's the old saying, you don't want to cross over or do a move in the backcourt, do you, coach? Well, Dundao, uh, he is a pest defensively. And Hu Jin Cho again, doing the easy stuff here for China. He has 12 points and a five-point lead. Dundao finding Lieutenant Gonsalves. Trying to kick out. But Hoover probably should have taken that shot. He cannot lose his confidence. Well, uh, you know, the pass was was off the mark there. Tough for, for him to come down with that. Trying to look to extend that lead back to seven. Maybe eight points if they go for a three-pointer. Well, Lee Kaya kicks out. Three is up in the corner. No good. Rebound secured by Domingos. Kicks out to Dindao. Down to Bruno Fernando. Fernando spinning. We go back to the free throw line. And this has been a problem for China because every time Angola got the ball inside the paint in the first half, it was just trip after trip to the charity stripe. Yeah, you know, Jin Chao getting his uh, hand stuck in there on this post move, but they should think about doubling these post catches. Again, Angola does not have a lot of perimeter shooting. Make them kick it back out onto the perimeter when they do get these deep touches. That's a good point you made there. Angola only 3 for 15 from the three-point line this evening. China have made four of their nine. Two of those coming from Hu Ming Xuan here in the third. Patiently trying to dissect this lead down. Angola led by as many as 11 points in this game. Fernando makes both. John Ray now kicking in the corner. So about going for the three point. Closed out here by Luke Kenny. Finds Hu Jin Cho again under the basket. Goes up and he gets the have one. Well, my goodness gracious, Coach, where has he been in this FIBA Basel World Cup? Yeah, what a performance here from Jin Cho. But the great drop-off pass there. Well, 14 points. It's very reminiscent of a Chinese Tim Duncan, just in and around the basket, not doing too, too much complicated stuff. Setting ball screens, getting dishes, and making it count for China. Yeah, but credit Jean Long there, really creating that opportunity for him with the penetration and drop off. Jin Chao once again being in the right place and able to deliver over these athletic bigs of Angola. China have missed seven free throws so far in this game, and this time he has no problem converting the three-point play. Now it's a six-point deficit. Well, the officials now just taking care of a bit of moisture that's on the basketball. It is very humid in this arena. Hey, you mentioned Substitutions now. Fernando has to leave the game. I'm not sure if he has a bit of blood on him or something. Well, those players look off on the bench. They've been under a lot of criticism and a lot of pressure so far, no doubt. A lot of expectations that go with the history and culture of Chinese basketball. The record holders of the FIBA Asia Cup. Just trying to go all the way, avoids the block. Another offensive support here for Angola, something that's been the underlying factor in their game. Leading the FIBA Basel World Cup in offensive boards. Kenny Teardrop. 
will go back to the free throw. Looks like Fernando may have just taken a shot to the nose. Bud Wiz coming out. And you see uh, Angola once again going to that set I mentioned earlier where they're screening the inside of that 2-3 zone, trying to get the guards to penetrate downhill from the top of the key. If you're China, those top guards need to just try to slide underneath the screen. Even if they end up at the free throw line, you'll live with the jump shots that the Angolan guards take. And Kenny turn to the free throw line here for Angola. He's missed two free throws so far tonight. As you mentioned, very streaky score for this Angolan team. We saw in the Philippines, I mean, he stepped up big time, hitting some big three-pointers for them. Yeah, I mean, he can get going, but the consistency has been an issue, and that's been a problem for this Angolan team. The ability to knock down the three-pointer with any sort of consistency. Five-point lead to China. And Jin Cho. That was going to be pulled on the ground. That's going to be the... 13 foul against Angola with 3.17 to go here in the third quarter. Well, China's top scorer so far in this game is Hu Ming Xuan. Eight points of those coming in the early stages here in the third quarter. He's currently on the bench. Zhang Jiwei trying to come off a ball screen. Oh, Hu Jin Cho, maybe coach. Just a little bit too high there. Probably could have dumped down to get a dish off. Well, you know, China needs to recognize Angola is going to aggressively hard hedge against these pick and rolls. The Chinese bigs need to look to slip out of them, try to get down to the rim as quickly as possible. Hu Jin Cho for the mid range. Front eye and can't get it. That would have made him China's top scorer. So would have made him top scorer in the game at the moment. Bruno Fernando. And Shield, they did out. Combined total 26, 13 apiece between them. Now trying to break the zone down. Domingo, deep three. Can't get it. John Jiwei thought about the three point again. Finds Hu Jin Cho, and a foul is called on Bruno Fernando. So he has a chance now to become the top scorer in this game. He has 15 points. He's made all three of his free throws so far here tonight. Yeah, he's been so good for them in this game, just finding the seams in this defense. Credit to Jal Ray there, seeing him on that roll, delivering the pass on time. Well, looking to re-extend a seven-point lead for China here in the third quarter. Two short on the first one. This guy can have broken noses, broken ankles. You're never going to stop Bruno Fernando from taking the floor, are you? Yeah, I don't think anyone could ever question his toughness. Been such a big component to the success of this Angola national team. Good to see him back in this game. Well, Djordjevic patiently, calmly looking on as this team have now got themselves in front by six. The English final, Luke Kenny. Go for post entry. Sosa goes baseline. Travel violation. Oh my God. The home crowd can't believe that one, but loving the occasion so far here at the Adonetta Coliseum. Yeah, I think that's the right call. The Sosa spinning before putting the ball on the deck there. And again, you're seeing this zone really bother Angola. John Ray maybe getting away with a push off. China's lead, six points. Mikaya going behind the back. Hesitating, pulls up. Look at this one. Can Angola find something here on this offense? English finds the Silva, the big man, no problem inside the paint. Yeah, Lee Kayar has to be much better defensively there. You see him gambling for the steal out on the perimeter. Needs to use his size, really back off these little guards from Angola. Sasha Djordjevic liking what he gets from Hu Jin Cho. And again, he goes up, and now he is the top scorer in this game with 18 points. And what a pass there from Jia Wei between the legs, finding Jin Zhao on the nice roll. Good response there by Bruno Fernando, and he'll go back to the free throw line. Still a six point ball game. Well, there's the dime you talked about. That is beautiful play. 
and the Chinese Tim Duncan, 18 points so far in the game. Well, could he be the unsung hero for the millions and millions of fans watching back in China? And to all the Chinese fans in the building loving this occasion. Interesting, they've made a change. So, Hu Jin Cho goes to the bench, take a breather. As now Joe Chi's back in the game. Well, that was his third foul, playing big minutes, much more minutes than what he's accustomed to. So, let's see how Joe Chi's doing. Had a chance to talk with one of the Chinese uh, officials of their federation at halftime, and he confirmed that Joe Chi is, in fact, battling through some injury here. So, been sitting quite a while here in the third quarter. Let's see if he's able to contribute in these final two minutes of, of the third quarter. Well, Bruno Fernando going to the bench to take a breather. Joji Wei going all the way to the basket again, finding the touch off the backboard. China continue to pile on the pressure. Nice finish there from Ji Wei with the Spanish pick and roll set. First time we've seen that from China today. Putting his hands in the cookie jar now. Can he finish this one behind the back pass? Can they finish yet again? With the follow-up there by Joe Chi, and now it's an eight-point ball came to China. Converting the turnovers into transition points with a follow-up by the big man. That's what they need. Yeah, Ji Wei coming into this game, really igniting their defense in these last couple possessions. Eight-point ball game. Kenny kicking this one out. Domingos got to make this one. Big three. But Silvia de Souza could miss the follow-up. That's going to be the yeah, 15 fouls. So two free throws coming up by Lee Kaya. Well, there was the acrobatic layup coming by Hu Ming Xuan. For Joe Chi, the former Houston Rocket, now playing for the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Yeah, and back to back highlight passes here from Ji Wei coming into the game here in the third quarter and really instilling some excitement into this group. One of the first times that I've seen players smiling. Some positive chemistry, chemistry finally for this Chinese national team. Li Kaya making the first free throw. China still with eight missed free throw attempts at 19 for 27 so far in this game. Now it's a 10 point ball game. China's first ever double digit lead here in the FIBA Basa World Cup. Yeah, so just a quick substitution there for Jin Chao back into the game after only about 30 seconds of rest. No doubt the Philippines will be watching this game. It's going to be a kickball violation. Who being Schwan? You can see his reaction there to the call. You see Dundao's frustration right now. Angola just unable to find any sort of rhythm against this 2-3 zone. Their shooting has been an issue throughout this World Cup. And, and you see these struggles right now when they're unable to get those easy baskets from offense rebounds and steals. Just difficult for them to find scoring. One second left, Lucchetti, big three, got to get this one, and that's way off the mark. And at the end of the third quarter, China completely turning this game around as they have a 10-point lead. Could be on their way to their first ever victory here at the 2023 FIBA Boxing World Cup for 10 minutes, and you can never count out Angola. Well, no question, with the way they pressure the ball, their ability to force turnovers, they're never out of a game. Uh, but right now, they have to figure something out against this 2-3 zone. Well, here are the top plays of the third quarter. Ja Ray trying to put the moves on. There's the kick out. Two three pointers by Hu Ming Xuan. This is where they need Joseph Bango and Bruno Fernando to really come and step up here in the fourth quarter. There's a transition play avoiding the block shot. Nice transition. Hu Ming Xuan does a very good job of getting out on the breaks. Yeah, nice job there with the pass ahead. Booming Schwan with some really good minutes there in that third quarter. But that's the man that's really delivered for them 
Jun Jong doing some great work there down low. Well, he is the top scorer in this game. Hu Jin Cho, 18 points. He's been phenomenal. The real driving force you mentioned for this Chinese team. But they've been searching for that go-to player. Chinese fans are loving everything about this. Well, there is a QR code for courtside 1891. Get the best stream schedules and scores. Using that QR code, the official platform brought to you by FIBA that hosts all international basketball and the 19th edition of World Basketball's highest level. Well, there's a the points tracker. Bruno Fernando, 15. Lee Kaiyo with 12. They haven't been the talking point in this game. It's all been about China's number 21, Hu Jin Cho. Yeah, it really has. The Chinese players have stepped up here. Not just him, Hu Ming Xuan, also with great minutes there in that third quarter. Getting a lot of production from the Chinese players coming off the bench. Angola getting the first possession of the fourth quarter. It's gonna be another traveling violation on Domingos. Kasi Tone over there for Angola, not the start they wanted. Yeah, the frustrations continue for Angola, just have not been able to solve this 2-3 defense. to be very aggressive here in the first few moments. They don't want this lead to get any bigger. Zhou Qi looking for a handoff, finding Zhao Ji Wei. Hesitates, kicks out. Hu Ming Xuan's made two threes. Can he make it three? That would have been big, but the follow-up by Zhao Ji Wei, so he'll go to the free throw line. That's positive offense coming from China. Yeah, great basketball there from China. You see the penetration, the kick to the corner, and then the extra pass up top. Ji Wei with the athletic put back here. Really nice way to start out the fourth quarter. China wins this game. This is gonna put insurmountable pressure on the Philippines to win tonight against South Sudan. Ji Wei makes the first free throw. Yeah, absolutely. These games so meaningful. Have to see what Japan does over on that side, but Gilas watching this game knowing that they're gonna have to come up with a big win against South Sudan later on. Well, Chinese fans, as are the Angolan fans, loving the occasion so far here at the Adeneta Coliseum. Well, the referee giving a warning there to Zhao Jiwei. Down at De Souza. Time winding down. Domingos going in and around the defense. Kicks out to him down. Another 24 second violation. Well, the zone defense really has exploited Angola in this game. Yeah, it really has. Angola just has not been able to find any solution to this defense so far. You see them trying to set screens up top, trying to get these guards downhill a little bit. I think maybe they should try to adjust to some post action, try to throw it down low, see if you can get cutters off the post catches. The ball screen just really not working for them. Now we're under nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. China's biggest lead so far, the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Zhao Ji way for a three-pointer. Copy this one. Chip back in this one. They need something. So down, down the middle. Domingos tries another three. That's way off the mark, but a foul is going to be called against Joe Chi. Oh no. Oh, of course, he gets Angola. Oh, coach, let's have a look at the replay. Are you kidding me? Yeah. If you're, uh, if you're De Sosa, that's got to be frustrating. I'm surprised we don't see a coach's challenge on that. That's a tough break for Angola there. That's an elbow to the face. Yeah, obviously the official uh, missed that one. Wow. That is a tough call. Now Angola. 
the back foot again, still trailing by 12. Still scoreless here in the fourth. Jochi getting the ball in the post, got it by DeSouza. Go for another three in the corner, three is up, and again, rolls its way in. Now it's a 15-point lead. And interestingly, you see Angola going with four bigs in their lineup. So we had seen three before, doubling down with size now. Coquila and Fernando, both the perimeter players, I think just hoping they can find offensive rebounds from whatever they run here. Fernando looking for the post up, kicks out of Coquila. Just can't get it going. This is what Angola needs, fight for the offensive boards. Angle in the lane, goes out of bounds. And that will be Angola Bull with nine seconds on the shot clock. And now Pep Klados, he needs to call timeout because that three-pointer there made it a 15-point deficit. China incredibly turning this game around. Yeah, big shot there. And you know, really, since they've switched to that 2-3 zone, everything going their way, Angola just unable to figure out how to produce a quality shot against it. Silvio, vas aquí dentro. Y tú después vas a opposite low. Pero queremos siempre un jugador grande aquí. Otro jugador grande aquí. Antonio, tú te vas moviendo. Intentar que la bola llegue siempre dentro. Vas aquí, sobe. Vas aquí un triángulo. Los tres solamente vais. Los dos solamente vais rotando. La bola con no dribles. Un drible paso. Si va dentro, va por la rápida. Vamos, caballero. Vamos, vamos. Well, here are some of the key highlights from China so far here in the third and fourth quarter, but Hu Ming Xuan, he has been a key game changer. Eight points at the beginning of the third quarter. That was the big difference, the game changer, the X factor for this Chinese national team. Yeah, great job there, not only on the transition opportunities, but knocking down the big threes, coming out here playing with a lot of confidence. And you heard Coach Klaus in that timeout telling his guys one dribble and move the ball. Wants to see them playing quicker here on the perimeter, but again, playing with four bigs right now in this lineup. Silvio inside the paint, goes up right again, a shot clock, and that's big for Angola. That's what they needed, their first two points here in the fourth quarter. He out, throws the alley oop, and Joe Chi connects with it. China's play becoming more and more confident. Yeah, beautiful pass there from Lee Kayar. Going back to that Spanish pick and roll there, that back pick being set on the big. Going back to Silvio. No basket, but it'll be two free throws coming up for Silvio De Souza. No basket for Chicago number 15, Joe Speed, that foul's on Joe Chi, I believe, actually, Coach. That's, yeah, it's his fourth personal foul. Yeah, maybe a little push in the back there, but uh, you can see Angola's game plan now, really just trying to turn it into an all-out war in the paint, coming with four bigs now, although Montero checking into the game, so that gives them a little bit more shooting on the perimeter, but a ton of size, two through five. They're going to try to bring these big bodies in there, see if they can get some putbacks, try to find the one player that has the smallest defender, see if they can get anything from that. Souza missing the first free throw. Again, these need to be made. Has to cut this down. 20 points so far. He's missed them both. Again, Angola is looking very tough for this team right now. Kicking this one out. China looking to extend. Leading by 15 points. Something we didn't expect. Zhao Ji Wei for a quick three pointer. That's a tough one. Can't get it. Oh, Jim Dow getting fouled again by Lee Kaya. So that's going to be the second team foul against China. The baseline ball for Angola. Yeah, but that's twice now we've seen with Lee Kayar reaching in here. He's got to know with Dundao, just give him space. Use your length, try to keep him in front. Well, Angola needs something. Fernandez watching off for the bench. 
And now Bruno Fernando. Montero's got to make this one. Wide open three. And Sylvia De Souza missed the follow up. Chow Ji Wei securing the rebound. Yeah, Ji Wei sticking his nose in there amongst the bigs. That's what they're going to have to do. Find a way to rebound against this huge lineup from Angola. China's opening game was a disappointing blowout against Serbia. He got out taking a circus shot. Nothing coming from that. Under six minutes. Can Angola fight their way back in this? They have to find ways to break down the zone. It's going to be the third team foul against China. That's on Ju Jun Long. Well, here's a guy that they need to get going for the perimeter. So, well, this is interesting. Sylvia De Souza is coming out, but Lucchetti Gonzalez, you know, you need to get his perimeter shots going. Yeah, coming in with a little bit more of a traditional lineup now. Went with those four bigs for a little bit there, but they're hoping that Lucchetti can get hot for them. They need somebody from the perimeter to knock in a shot, try to loosen up this zone a little bit. The Dow final, Luke Kenny. Bangle in the post now. Kenny finds something. Bruno pump fakes. Bruno steps. The foul has been drawn, so he'll go back to the charity stripe. But he's got to make these free throws. 5.28 to go as Angola trail by 50. Remember, they already have a victory so far, and that was against the Philippines. Yeah, not a good closeout there from John Long. He's got to make Fernando beat him from the perimeter. Fernando has hit 1 3, but. Obviously much more effective when he can get inside the paint. That's what China had been doing such a good job of with that 2-3 zone. Staying compact, keeping these guys out on the perimeter with the ball. Well, Fernando making the first one. I feel the anxiety from some of the Angolan fans. And they led by as many as 11 points. But he missed the second one. 14 points. A separation between Angola and China. Jimmy Schwan now trying to put the moves off. Goes up and the follow up by Hu Jin Cho. And that's a big time play. Jin Cho once again doing damage against this Angolan team inside the paint. Nice follow and the dunk put back there. Now it's a 16 point ball game. Montero's got to make this three. Puts up and six out one in the corner. And now Sasha Georgievich, he has to call timeout. Because the Angola comeback could happen at any point in this game. He needs to make sure his players hold on. Chinese fans, one more time. Xie Xiani. That is Jai Yo Chongguo. Hu Jin Cho, the driving force so far in this game for this Chinese national team. Yeah, he's been so good for them in this game. You know, nice job there from Ming Shuang in creating the opportunity, but Jin Chao doing such a good job of rolling hard to the rim, finding these opportunities on offensive rebounds. We're in a two. We're in a two. Hey. Can we do this? No. Keep playing what you're playing till now. Well, again, the Chinese Tim Duncan in and around the basket. And the reason I call him a Chinese Tim Duncan because this game is so simple. Give him the ball in the paint, and he finds a way to break the defense down. Sets ball screens, rolls very effectively. Where has he been, coach? Well, you know, he's uh, taken advantage of this opportunity with the minutes he's been given. Excellent job of playing through contact. That's something that's been lacking. We saw both Zhou Qi and Wang Zhi Lin struggling to finish in their earlier games in this tournament. Really nice there, uh, job there from Jin Chao. Now remember, if Japan loses to the Philippines, to the, so excuse me, if they lose to Venezuela and Okinawa, this could make things very interesting in the final game as China will take on the Philippines. Bumi Schwan, step back, three-pointer, can't get it. Plenty of time here for Angola. 
Then the board wrestle with Kenny's wide open. He'll fire it. And again, back to back triples here from the Angolans. Now it's a 10 point ball game. Well, that's twice you've seen them give uncontested threes. Well, that's a silly foul to give away, Coach. Montero's going to go to the free throw line now. Yeah, I was going to say, and then compounding it there with the foul. But, you know, China wants to stay compact, but you can't dare them to shoot, especially from the corner. So that's twice we've seen them not rotate out, giving up wide open threes. And look at what Peter is shooting two for Chris. A chance to cut the 16-point lead in half by eight points if he can make both of these. But Montero, whoa. Mental blunder there from Montero, but it's not the first ever we've seen so far here at the FIBA last so walk up from a free throw shot. Yeah, well, the shooting lows continue. Missed them both. Wang in secures the rebound. Trying to survive that one. Kaya being heavily defended. Now going around the defense, goes in with a fang roll. And now it's back to a 12-point ball game. Great take there from Lee Kayar. I like the decision to put the ball in his hands. You know Angola is going to be pressuring. You need to make sure that you're getting a quality shot on every possession here. Can Kenny go for the step back? Can he make the third three? Can't get it. Montero's going to get caught for the push in the back. China's fans standing all over the arena. Believing in that team. This team has been under a lot of pressure from the first three games. Yeah, absolutely. You see the push in the back there from Montero, but really the first time that they've had a lead here in the second half of a World Cup game. So great to see them shedding some of that pressure that was on them coming into this tournament, playing with a lot more confidence than what we've seen previously. The crazy part about it as well, it's also their first double digit lead of the 2023 FIBA Vasa World Cup. So it's almost like we're seeing a different China team here. John Jill in the penetration goes. Oh my goodness! Well, I mean, yeah, you got to uh, credit that trying to go up against Bruno Fernando there. Unbelievable attempt there from Zhang Jinlin, and it just shows you the confidence these Chinese players are showing in this game. Zhang Jinlin now has to take the acrobatic, hits the top of the backboard, can't get it. But it's under three minutes here with a 12 point lead for China. Yeah, and if you're Angola, you have to find a way to create some quick shots here. Don't really have time to work this clock. Good hands from Zhang Jilin. Angola, this really is incredible. You think top professional FIBA Vasa World Cup players would struggle to break down a 2-3 zone. Well, the issue is the shooting, and you can see where they really miss Carlos Marais. Uh, just no consistent three-point threat there. Can he go baseline? Montero gets blocked there. Zhang Jilin, just getting had to it. Bango comes up with it. It's another Angola turnover. Gola, time running down for them. Chinese fans all in the building saying, Jai Yo. Zhao Rei going all the way, kicks out. Zhang Zhe Lin, big three, doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. And who else but Hu Jin Chao once again coming up with a huge play there. Li Kai Ya going in with a sweet little finger roll. Well, he's becoming the Chinese Iceman. Looking like George Kerbin in a China jersey. Yeah, really nice finish there. I think keeping the ball in his hands for this last two minutes, solid decision. Okay, get the end one, but it's going to go over the backboard. But two free throws coming up here for Shilly to Dow. 1.55 to go. But the timeout's going to be quarter against Pep Flowers. Nice move there. Iceman taken by Lee Kaya. Yeah, great finish there. 
Lee Kayar uh, having one of his best games in the World Cup so far. Really, if you're China over these last two minutes, it's going to be about taking care of the ball. You know that pressure is coming from Angola. Make sure that you're not turning it over. <laughs> Cuando jugamos medio, uh, disculpa, cuando jugamos uh, preto, cuando jugamos preto, lo que queremos, ¿está Simpson para jugar o no? Pregunta si está para jugar. Es que... Well, the Angolan fans despair from them because they had a 10-point lead, but let's listen now to Pep Claros. Well, 36 minutes played by Lee Kai on the scene. He has been phenomenal. It's a collective effort. It's the old cliche, basketball is a team game. So many players have come into the frame today, but it's all about Fu Jin Chou, 20 points, leading scorer in the game for you know for all teams. Yeah, he's really been a difference maker for them. Great though to see Lee Kaiar finding his way within this team. You saw China plus 12 with him on the court. That has not been the case prior to this game. Seemingly out of rhythm when he's been on the floor, but right now everything going China's way. Well, Shieldy Dendow, if he makes his free throw, cuts it down to a 12-point ball game. You know, if you're going, do you think about trapping here in the full court, or what do you go for? Oh, absolutely. They're going to be in full court pressure, trying to force turnovers as best as they can. They've got the three guards in right now, so you'll see aggressive man-to-man -man with probably some run and jumping. Well, no traps coming so far. Kaya being defended in the half court by Luke Henny Gonzalez. Trying to get something going. Going in with a side Euro step gets rejected, but it's going to be two free throws coming up. Interesting that Angola didn't go for any full court pressure off the man's man. I mean, China just got rid of everybody that left Luke Kaya, but you know, no traps came whatsoever. Yeah, I'm really surprised to see that. You know, not a lot of time left in this game. Angola's got to find a way to create more possessions. Surprised we didn't see the trap, but I like the decision. Put the ball in Lee Kayar's hands. You know that there's going to be the potential of those traps, but just isolate him on top. Either use a middle pick and roll if he needs it, or otherwise let him go one on one here for the final minute and a half. Yeah, Golden play is a lot to think about, but you know, coach. As you mentioned, if you don't have perimeter shooters, it's very tough to break down any kind of zone defense. But you know, they, even before China went to that zone, Angola had the double-digit lead, and China, you know, through sort of mid and grit defense, who found themselves back in this game. There's got to be a lot of things that Pep Claris is going to want to reflect on with his players. Well, you know, the lack of shooting has been an issue for a while. I'm surprised that China didn't go to that zone earlier in this game. But once they did, you can see the frustrations Angola has. It's just difficult for them to create anything with the defense so compact like that. Well, Zhang Jilin going to the bench to take a breather. That's Chu Junlong, number 26, subs back in for China. Well, turns it over. John Ray. Again, game is not over by any means. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this time the ball not in Lee Kayar's hands. It's difficult with those quick little backcourt defenders of Angola. Both Makanda and Dundao, really tough defenders on the ball. Lee Kayar, not only a you know, skilled ball handler, but probably the easiest matchup there with Lukini Gonsalves. 34 combined turnovers between Angola and China. Both teams 17 each. Angola's got to get something here. Yeah, just can't get it. China surviving. Now we're under a minute to go, leading by 11. Looking for their first victory here in the FIBA Basel World Cup. Way being guided by Makonda. Tries to go for the backdoor play, but it will be China's possession on the baseline with nine seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, very quick substitution there for Lee Kayar. 
Maybe just a drink of water. They're going to need him on the court, putting the three ball handlers together with Zhao Ray. Ji Wei also with the KR. Zhao Ji Wei, corner three, takes it, doesn't get it. Well, again, it's been tough here for Angola. Shady Dun Dao going in the lane. Again, avoids the block, and what a nice move. Now it's a nine point ball game with 34.8 seconds left. Yeah, nice take here from Dundao. And if you're China, this is the last thing that you want to do, giving quick transition opportunities to Angola. They went a long stretch there, keeping them in the half court. Need to do that here in the final 30 seconds. We want it over there. Oh, no, here. 24 seconds. Here, I don't care. They're going to foul. They're going to foul, OK? Shen, Shen. Shen, OK. Three guys, control it. Control it. And run the shot clock, okay? Run the shot clock. Four. Watch out, Fred. Watch out, Fred. Always, he's coming. Boom. He's dribbling. The other guy behind. Behind. We're going behind. Always behind. Well, there is the energy tracker. Lee Kaya leading the way so far here for China. He's played the most minutes, but. You know, he's really had to battle through a lot. As you mentioned, not naturally a go-to scorer when he plays in the NBA with the Minnesota Timberwolves, but he's had to step up and adapt his game to you know, play that role here for China. Well, this is the best chemistry that we've seen so far in the World Cup with him and his Chinese national team. He's a player that can do a lot of different things, so sometimes it's difficult to figure out how to use him best within this group. They need his scoring, so 17 big points from him today. Let's see how they finish out, whether he has the ball in his hands for the last 30 seconds. Zhang Wei almost turning it over. Keeping this one alive. No need to rush anything. Time is on China's side. This is going to be monumental. This is really going to shift things up here in the classification. Yeah, and I don't know why Angola is not trapping or fouling here. One second left. Zhao Ji Wei, end of the shot clock, doesn't get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to all the fans back in China, this is going to be monumental. China have dug deep. They pick up their first victory of the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Jiayo Zhongguo, that man has led them to a big victory, and this is going to change things monumentally. Remember, Japan has to play Venezuela tonight, and if Venezuela win that game, it's going to be all up for grabs to see who gets that number one spot of the Asian teams during the FIBA World Cup for the Paris 2024 Olympics. Yeah, a lot to play for in these uh, last two games here in the classification round. Big game coming up next with Gilas as well. That Asian group really up for grabs. Who's going to take that top spot for the Olympic bid? Well, again, you know, Coach, we talked about it. But you mentioned it as well, especially. Angola just couldn't shoot the three against the 2-3 zone. But go back to that game against the Philippines, they had 9 or 10 three-pointers. They just couldn't replicate that here tonight. Yeah, the three-point shooting has been an issue for them for quite some time. Came into this game at 18% from three, last place in the World Cup. You see just five for 26 in this game. Nice adjustment from China to go to that zone, force them to beat them from the outside. Angola out rebounding China, 42 to 33. And China with three more assists. Angola with nine steals. But in the end, it will be China who take the dub. Hu Jin Cho, well, introduce yourself to the world, young man. This is your moment. And now Sasha Djordjevic has realized that he has a new play about Chinese players currently surrounding Chao Ray on the floor. Something's happened to him. I'm not sure what's happened. Well, that's a worrying sign there for China. That's a very concerning sign. Yeah, yeah. Not sure what happened there. I was hoping that it had just been cramps from him, but the way he's leaving this court, definitely a little concerning. Well, Chao Ray, she with five points. He did have six assists for that matter. He has been a key facilitator so far for this Chinese national team. But Hu Jin Cho, the MVP, picking up the TCL, most valuable player in the game, Ward. 
Well, the perimeter shooting for the Chinese players. Only five three-pointers. And that one coming by Ju Junlong in the beginning of the first quarter. Yeah, and there were a couple of times in this game where they were able to go into the post, find perimeter shooters either off of split screen actions or cuts. Nice job there for Zhou Chi to kick it out and find Zhen Lin. Well, a strange turn of events. You never thought it was going to happen, of course. You know, we thought coming into this game, Angola were going to have the physical and athletic presence that would intimidate China. But China tactically playing that 2-3 zone, and that really just, I mean, it gave nothing for Angola offensively. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was the story of the game. Angola able to get to the rim, play their style of game until China went to that 2-3 zone. Well, that was the big follow-up there by Hu Jin Cho. I mean, a big-time play didn't necessarily change the momentum of the game. It just kept driving the Chinese basketball force even forward. Yeah, I think the word solid comes to mind. He just did such a good job of finding his way into the paint, slipping out of those ball screens, and being able to finish through the athleticism of Angola. Well, Lee Kaya with some big monumental isolation plays at the end. You like how he patiently just attacks the rack and just, you know, it's a, it's a I like to call it the George Gervin style. Not a finger roll, but a fanger roll. <laughs> I love that phrase. Well, uh, you know, nice job there of Lee Kayar, and that's what they need from him. There are instances where they just need to put the ball in his hands, trust that he'll be able to deliver a quality possession for them on offense. Well, there was a transition play. Lukeni Gonzalez finishing under pressure, but it just was enough for Angola. Final play there, Lee Kaya shaking hands with his NBA rival, Bruno Fernando. But at the end of this one, it is going to be a big, big victory for China. Well, there he is standing, sharing this group. They still have to play against the Philippines. That's going to be a clash of the FIBA Asia Cup Titans. Those two teams vying to get that one position for the Paris 2024 Olympics. But ladies and gentlemen, our final game of the evening will be between South Sudan and the Philippines. That will take place later, local time 8 p.m. But for now, to all of our fans in China, Tsai Jian and Wan Chung Hao. Okay. 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 Okay.